What's up? What's up? All right. I think we're all good to go. So what we're going to do here is we're not going to waste any time. Um, I love to introduce Dan Da Silva. I'm going to drop his um, Instagram handle as well at Da Silva. Make sure you guys show some love to everyone that's speaking today. Everyone is doing this completely free, taking time out of their busy schedule to present you amazing information that's working for their business right now. Got a couple hundred people on here right now. This is 100% live. So uh, Dan, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you and I am here. Can, can everybody else hear me? Can you give me a one in the chat box if it's uh, if the audio is coming through and you guys can hear my beautiful sounding voice? Okay, cool. So it seems like everyone can hear it. Awesome. All right, Dan, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video here and I'll let you take it away. I know that you have an awesome presentation uh, for everybody right now. Yes. All right, cool. So welcome, everybody. And uh, traditionally, I could see your comments when they roll in. So I'll take a look at the very end if there's any comments that I can go ahead and address. Now, I just quickly want to let everybody know I am you know, a little tight on time. So if I'm blowing through this, going through this a little faster than you're typically used to, um, don't worry. I know Anthony has some sort of replays set up. So Here's what we're going to be talking about today. It's increasing sales with strategic retargeting ads. Now, this works with any product you have to sell, physical or digital. And I actually went ahead and uh, did this presentation about a week ago, and um, it blew people away with just some of the retargeting strategies and and you know why retargeting is so powerful and all of that. So I'm going to break everything down. I'm going to show you some examples. Um, and again, like I said, I just took the slides that I did about a previous week ago put them in here, but overall this works both selling physical, uh, digital, really any type of product online, retargeting is the same exact concept. So the very first stage is know where your customer is in their journey with you and your brand. And this is very important because not understanding where somebody is in their journey with you or your brand is actually um, you know, a disservice to them. And here's the thing, if they've seen a piece of your content and then you create a retargeting ad talking to them saying, hey, look, I know you've seen this, now check this out, right? That's where you're, that's kind of like what you need to know. And if they watch the video and they see the other ad that says, hey, look, I know you've seen this, you can hit them with another retargeting ad that says, hey, I know you've seen this and this, but what about this? So you need to know where they are in their journey. You need to kind of understand your customer as well. So. If they're brand new to you and your brand, you're going to have to hit them with multiple different retargeting angles. And here's the thing is that everybody ticks completely differently, right? What makes one person tick doesn't make the other person tick. So what, you know, the, what Anthony might purchase based off of is completely different. What I might purchase based off of, which is completely different than uh, what somebody else might purchase based off of. So giving people different angles and giving people different options, is phenomenally um, in your favor. And a lot of people don't do this. They create a single retargeting campaign and they say, well, retargeting doesn't work. Well, retargeting does work. It's the highest form of ROI and it's the cheapest form of advertising as well. But you have to understand angles and we'll get to that in just a bit. You have to understand angles and a few key metrics here. So like I said, you wanna understand where the customer stands with your brand while creating your retargeting campaigns and that is half the battle because you can talk to them based on what you know what they've been through what type of funnels you've put them through what type of page they've landed on you can go ahead and easily um, you know talk to them and that's what you want to do with retargeting you're essentially continuing the conversation and you're carrying over the narrative so uh, I was gonna go ahead and show you a live example but for time purposes um, I actually went ahead and put images over here. So stage two is talk to these people as if you're in their head and you want to play off the narrative already happening. All right. So this is a great example because we this ad in particular, we've done over two million dollars with when we ran this. And what we did here was we took the narrative that was already happening in somebody's head because we know they've came to this particular page. They went to a sales page, a product page. And then we said, hey, listen, we know you've been here but you didn't get this. So, and you can see right here, didn't get inside of this product yet. We've got something special to offer you since we noticed you came into this product, but didn't take the leap inside. We want to give you an insane offer that that we're only extending for the next couple of days. See what it is here. And then I created a separate page that had a separate offer that was pretty much the same exact offer. But when I mean separate offer, I mean, there was just a different um, you know, stack of bonuses or I grouped up the product with something else. 
So I gave them a different touch point. So if they went to that website, they had one of two things that happened. They either purchased or they get added to a new retargeting list based on the website pages they visited. So then I can create another retargeting ad saying, listen, we've shown you this, but you didn't take it up. So how about you take 10% off or 20% off and still get this extra yeah. add on that we have for you. So there's a narrative playing in their head. You know, they, we know that they came to the site. We know that they're interested. We know that there's something that we need to do to get them over the edge. So sometimes they're like, oh, I wish I, um, for in this case, oh, I wish I had some way to make an extra side income, right? Then the retargeting ad would look like looking for a way to make some side income. Why? Yes, yes, I am, right? So understanding that. Uh, so we understand that you're into grilling. So how about this new spatula that we have to offer? Just kind of going out there and, and uh, brainstorming something. Or even, you know, we, we know you're interested in having whiter teeth. How about taking a look at our teeth whitening kit again but this time you'll get three free months of teeth whitening serum or gel if you go ahead and take action it's a special little link just for the people that went and looked at the product originally but didn't purchase very important that you understand this because we already know like i said the narrative happening is that they went to the page and they didn't take an action and there was a reason why is because something didn't make them tick just yet so the easiest way to figure out a winner is by testing three to five different angles. This is so important. When it comes down to uh, running ads successfully, there's two things. It's angle and click-through rate All right, on your retargeting ads. It's the angle of the actual ad because if your angle of your ad is bad, unfortunately, you're going to get no traction, which is going to have a low CTR, which is going to have a high CPM. So I hope uh, I'm spitting out these terms. I hope you guys understand what these terms are as well. So I hope it's kind of clicking in your head. So the third stage here is you want to make a relevant offer to the narrative already happening in the user's head. So this is another retargeting ad that we ran specifically for Cyber Monday. And the craziest part is, is we asked Facebook to spend, I think it was like $3,000 that day, and it only spent 250 bucks. But we ended up getting 31 purchases on that 250 bucks and each purchase was valued at $500 to us. And again, I guess the, I guess the availability of, of supply and ad space wasn't, wasn't enough. So we couldn't, you know, get the 2,500 or $3,000 to spend here, but you'll notice that as well with your retargeting. If you set it on a CBO, um, you know, lifetime, then what happens here is sometimes it might not spend in totality. You just want to duplicate it and let it run again. So if they came to your page, that means they're interested in that thing you have to sell and offer. You just have to go ahead and give them a reason, give them another reason, make it even better. So if they didn't buy in the first try, that means they could easily have forgotten or they weren't ready. So you want to make it as easy to remember about you and your brand as you can. And I want you to think about this logically, okay? Think about the last time you were browsing on Facebook on your phone and you saw an ad or even Instagram and you saw an ad and then you clicked on it and you're like, wow, this is really cool. I'm going to buy this, right? And then you get a call from a friend or something happens in the kitchen or you have to be at the doctor's office or you have to go food shopping in like three minutes, right? Before the store closes. So all of these things happen, right? Life gets in the way. So a lot of times people will get a lot of traffic, but they won't get sales and they don't start retargeting. But what you gotta understand is that traffic that comes to your site, they are end users. They are people, like I understand that there's somebody right now at their desk, at a local coffee shop, watching me talk to you, and I get that. So you need to understand that as well, is that there's a human on the other side of the computer and, or phone, and they have a life to live as well. So life gets in the way, and retargeting is what makes everything come full circle where if they get interrupted by life, you can go ahead and say, hey, look, we know you forgot about this, right? So think about it like a card abandonment, but it just follows them around everywhere. So if the offer is relevant and the audience knows who you are and they're ready to take action, that's when the sale occurs. Now, ready to take action is all kind of stemming from if the offer is relevant. Now, the audience knows you because they're in your retargeting list. So if the offer is relevant and you add on extra goodies or you know an extra product or you bundle your products up together, that's when they're ready to take action. That's when the sale will occur. So the number one thing you want to nail down is omnipresence. And it's so ironic that um, 
that I'm talking about omnipresence because one of the presenters here today, Devin, uh, Devin was one of my very, very, very first mentors. And Devin really drove this point home back in like 2016. And he was like, omnipresence, Dan, it's all about omnipresence. I'm like, what is omnipresence? And he was like, omnipresence is literally being everywhere at any given time. So you guys probably have been on people's websites and you go to another website, like uh, let's just say you went to CNN. And the next thing you know is you see that same exact banner ad of the product you were just looking at or the site you just visited. And you're like, man, all right, um, I can't get away from this. Or you go back to Facebook and then you see the same exact uh, person or brand and then it's just a different angle. It says, hey, we know you didn't check this out or hey, we know you checked this out, but we know you didn't buy. So you follow people around the internet with retargeting and that's omnipresence. It's always being on you know, top of mind for people. And it's the, uh, again, the exact definition is the state of being widespread or constantly encountered. So omnipresence equals frequency. So Frequency is good. The higher the frequency, typically the better. However, it's only going to work if you have a consistent flow of traffic. Now, let me explain this a little bit more. If you only have 2,000 people in your retargeting audience for, let's just say, uh, six months, and your frequency is 100, and they still haven't bought, then your messaging and your angle, quite frankly, uh, isn't the best, all right? So just keep that in mind. You need to be constantly building your retargeting audience database and that's with cold traffic. That's with like interest-based or no interest-based uh, targeting. And treat it like your baby because your retargeting audience, your retargeting database, you can build it to infinite. You can build it to like two, three, four, five million people. And why that's so valuable is because you can launch an ad, launch a new campaign, launch a new product, whatever it is, hit those people and the sales will just start rolling in. Your pixels are already warmed up and the sales will just, it'll be like an avalanche of sales. That's why retargeting is so important. And to be fair, retargeting on steroids, I would call it lookalike audiences. So if it wasn't for lookalike audiences, Facebook would actually be, in my opinion, completely useless. Their power is lookalike audiences. So um, now again, completely useless is very, I use that very loosely. They're still very useful but that's where the real power is. That's like retargeting on steroids because you can take your website video viewers, um, you could take visitor time spent, you can take so many different retargeting lists that you create and create lookalike audiences around that and stack it onto the retargeting you're doing for cold, for cold targeting, which is, oh my gosh, it is, it is incredibly, incredibly profitable if done correctly. Now the type of custom audiences that I would suggest if you're a beginner and you wanna go ahead and get your feet wet, is website visitors, video viewers, and visitors by page. So website visitors, you can do all website visitors. Video viewers, you already know, you can do like 95%, etc. cetera, three second video viewers, whatever it is, and visitor by page. So you would grab the end of your URL, like uh, slash collection, slash hair extension one, and then you would paste that into web page equals, and then it would go ahead and track it in Facebook, and anybody who went to that particular page would go ahead and be added to that retargeting audience. So you can talk to those people based on the fact, knowing that they went to that exact product. So you can create a retargeting ad based on knowing that they went to that product and you can say, hey look, we know you came here and visited this particular product, how about taking 20% off now, right? And so that'll get a lot of people in the door, it'll entice a lot of people as well. Now the most important key metrics that you really wanna focus on here, and here's the thing, is that everybody will give you different key metrics. This is what I look at, this is what I like to look at preferably, and um, every campaign is different. But at the end of the day, at the end of it all, what's most important is ROI. If I spend $100 for every single sale, but I'm making $105 back, or $5 profit, I'm all right with that. It's ROI. At the end of the day, it's ROI. So your return. So your angle of your actual ad is super, super important. And I mentioned this before. Now, a lot of people get this wrong is that they launch a brand new campaign. They only have one creative talking to, you know, one specific person and they're like, okay, this doesn't work. It's not enticing. The offer isn't enticing. They already saw the offer, right? So if they didn't buy on the first time that they went to your page, then more than likely you need to entice them more so you can go ahead and initiate that sale. Like I said before, the offer needs to be good and they need to be ready to purchase 
that's based on the offer as well. Click through rate. Now, click through rate over 2.5%, you have a winner that is scalable. Some will say 4%. As you can see, majority of these campaigns that were, uh, that were winners uh, were over 4% as well. So I have a 2% in there, but 2.5% is rule of thumb. If you have a 2.5% click through rate, that's not bad whatsoever. The higher, the better. And CPMs under $15, you can scale with a high CTR as well. So uh, I like to go ahead and have my CPMs under $15. Again, in a perfect world, my CPMs would be like $8, $7, but we don't live in a perfect world. So if you're at 15, 16, $17 CPM, that's okay. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's all about ROI. Now the best types of retargeting, what type of assets are they? So a lot of, you know, this is very, um, this is very opinionated of me as well. I love to use images to retarget because they already saw the video as the initial. And typically uh, I like to use videos to open and then images to follow around the internet, right? To follow them around with retargeting. So what I'll go ahead and do is they'll see the video and I'll create images with different angles. I'll have the product there, but one might say 20% off plus this gift, 30% off plus this gift. And I'll test them, I'll create uh, three different ads inside of one ad set and see which one performs the best. And then I'll use that one and then I'll start creating different angles. And that's really what retargeting is about is constantly looking for the new angle that makes people tick. And you're always going to be looking for new angles because every product, every person has a different ticking point as well. So um, again, if you want an image pack, danisilva.live slash 20 ads, there's nothing to buy, it's just an image pack. So I wanna go ahead and open up the, the Q&A here. So I'm gonna stop sharing and then I'll share, um, share the slides so you guys can see the slides right here since I presented everything. So let's see, um, where is the chat? Oh, I found it, I got it. All right, um, let's see, let's see here. Let's go to all, all right, uh, public, I think, I think that's it. Um, you guys have any questions, view questions, there we go. No questions have been marked yet. Maybe Anthony, you can help me out with finding these questions. I'm a little new to this um, platform. So so, I would say, are you still gonna share your screen or are you gonna close it out? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to leave up the, I'm pretty much just going to leave up the, the, the end slide, um, and, and answer questions here. Cause I know people have questions. Cause when I did this, uh, last week, uh, there were a lot of people with questions saying, Oh, Dan, what about this retargeting strategy, that retargeting strategy, which I got here. So, um, I definitely, uh, guys, I highly encourage you with the last, uh, with the last 10 minutes that we have here asking questions because I can answer your questions live here. Yeah, So and, and the chat was, um, the chat was so dead yeah. because I had it uh, set to private as last week, people had to, ah. be, uh, had to be put in timeout due to distracting everybody. <laughs> so um, that's see. why it was private, but you turned it to public, so we'll let it run public for a bit. Oh, sorry, okay. I didn't know that. Um, so we have a couple of questions, uh, one of them being, uh, do you suggest general stores? Can we propose X percent off plus a donation offer? There's a few of them coming in, if you can see it. Did you find the chat? Yeah, yeah, I, okay, see cool. it. I see it here. Cool. So, uh, okay. Do you suggest retargeting all visitors or specific events? Garrett, I would suggest doing all and creating lookalikes around all as well. So you would literally go ahead and retarget all different events. It, purchases will be your highest events that will get you a lot more purchases. Um, but create lookalikes around your purchase audience. Create lookalikes around every single one of your events. You can obviously retarget based on events as well. So like ATC, ICs, uh, so add to cart, initiate checkout, um, uh, uh, you know, visitor time spent, website views. There's so many different um, retargeting uh, out kind of outputs that you can use that you should be using and you should be using all of them, okay? Because you'll be so surprised which ones actually convert, all right? So why, uh, let me see, Mohammed says, why CPM is different, higher or lower for the same interest when one ad set is at $20 budget and the other is in a CBO $40 campaign? Well, that's because you're getting shown to a different section of the market. Um, so essentially, it's not like if you have a single campaign and you're, you're testing both campaigns back to back and your reach, let's just theoretically say, is 5,000 people in each one. Each reach, each 5,000 people will be different. So your CPMs are a direct 
correlation to your CTR and your CTR is a direct correlation of your angle. So if your ad isn't performing well, the actual creative, it's going to have a low CTR, which means you're going to have a high CPM. So, um, so yeah, that's what you have to, um, keep in mind. Come also CBO versus ABO. So uh, campaign based optimization versus ad set based optimization when testing products. Um, now, Kamal, this is a this is actually a question that I would um, it, that I would classify as a budget question. Um, if you have enough budget, test both. But if you had to choose one, CBO, okay, CBO out on a lifetime, in my opinion, CBO on a lifetime uh, with three to five ad sets with generic targeting. I'm talking no interest targeting. All right, so. So of all the retargeting channels you had, which ones work best? SMS, email, messenger, or the ads? So ads, 100% ads. Um, runner up is email, but email uploading the list to Facebook, ironically. So you just have this massive list that you upload and you go ahead and you, uh, you retarget that email list. But then again, you have that list if it's all website visitors, right? If you have all website visitors, um, th then it's the same thing as uploading your email list. So do you suggest general stores? I suggest the niche store and then taking out the products that the niches are in the, the niches are literally, um, the, the best way to go. A general store is very hard with the pixel, uh, with pixel tracking in my opinion, but the, the riches are in the niches, right? So you want to, you want to niche down, niche down, however you want to say it and kind of, hyper focus and audience and we actually have a store right now that's doing exceptionally well just in a single niche but only one product is doing 80 percent of the revenue um so just kind of keep that in mind uh so uh, let's see so keep uh let's let's keep these related to retargeting and ads and all of that so what's the best way to test a product with minimal with minimal spend uh cbo lifetime with uh, three to five ad sets and leaving the targeting, the interest targeting to nothing. Um, so let's see, how do you conduct your product research? Have you used spyware? Uh, I conduct product research. Uh, I was actually just talking to Anthony about this before we, we got on call. Um, there's so many different tools that you can use and resources and spying on ads. Um, there's no set right way to do product research. I mean, to be quite fair with you, the best way to do product research is find an ad that's working and then use the product, test it yourself, right? So let's see here. Our store is currently selling product and it's a winner for them. I made a way better ad creative and store, but it's not performing well. Any suggestions? Yeah, their angle was working. So you just said you created a different ad. You, you have a way better creative and a store. Maybe it's their angle. Maybe they have a maybe they have a warm pixel. There's so many different contributing factors here. They could have spent five thousand dollars just to build their initial retargeting campaign, their their campaign list, and they're running ads to that list continuously and going out there and making a lot of money doing it that way. Um, so Mike says, how uh, how niche down do you want to go? For example, home and have subcategories or kitchen and have subcategories. So. Um, if I were to create a niche store, it would be around, uh, it would be like, if we're talking about this, I would go with kitchens, right? Rather than just doing home in general, because at that point you're, you're going out there and competing with massive, massive brands that, uh, you know, quite frankly require a lot of capital and can, uh, let's see, have you tried customer reviews and retargeting? Yes, actually that's what works the best. That is, in my opinion, that's what crushes like a selfie video of somebody saying, Hey, I just got this product from this store and you know, check it out. Yeah. And this is what it does. They're offering 20% off making it look like a customer. That is actually what's performing the best for us. Remember I mentioned before that we have a store, um, where one product's doing 80% of the revenue and, uh, the actual ad for it is literally somebody uh, reviewing the product. Um, and I think, uh, and, and somebody released a, an email newsletter the other week, uh, talking exactly about that. Anthony, I forgot the exact term that they use, like, like testimonial sandwich or something yep. like that. And, uh, they're absolutely correct. So.